Welcome back to the final segment of Kooky Cons- I mean, Magic Kool-Aid. Oh, I'm sorry, got a little mixed up there for a second. You're probably wondering who is going to be the focus for our last segment of this episode. Well, her name is Marina Shut Up, and she's a feminist. She's a white feminist. And just what we need, a white feminist is here to tell us what is and is not cultural appropriation. So uh, let's see what she has to say. Feminist Friday, a series teens. where you explore the social, the political, and the media from a feminist and intersectional perspective, and use a lot of F words. Means. On today's episode of mm. Feminist Friday's, we're going to be discussing what has been by far the most requested video topic, cultural appropriation. Can't wait to if see what you do If you've ever been to it. a Halloween party, then you're most likely familiar with cultural appropriation, even yeah. if you didn't know it at the time. Mm. What is cultural appropriation? First, we need to define what culture is. The sociologist Nikki Lisa Cole defines culture as the practices, beliefs, ideas, values, traditions, rituals, what language, do you speech, it as? modes this of is communication, material objects, Why are you telling and performances us what that are central to the social life of any given group. If I want to know what she defines it as, I'll go find her words for it. But I'm watching your video, so why don't you tell us what you think it is? People. Cultural appropriation is basically when you take something from a culture that you don't belong to, such as a Native American headdress, cough, Coachella, and use it outside of that cultural context, usually without understanding its cultural significance and- Okay, so what you just said is that basically people can own certain kinds of looks, certain kinds of ideas, and that anyone who in any way plays with those ideas or who emulates them is somehow guilty of theft. Like, if you wear a Native American headdress, then you are stealing from the culture of Native Americans. Therefore, you are a thief. So, I don't think that's how ideas work. I don't think that's how looks work. I don't think that you can steal abstract ideas and uh, take ownership of them because they're not real. They're not material, okay? And if you continue to say that people can only dress in a certain way based on the way that they look, then you are actually perpetuating racism. You are telling people to stay within the boxes of their racial cultures and that they cannot stray from outside of those boxes. Would you tell a Native American who wears glasses and some slacks and a dress shirt and a tie that he is appropriating white culture? You see, it has to work both ways for what you're saying to be true, but it doesn't. You would rather that Native Americans continue to be marginalized. You would rather that nobody remember this shit in a hundred years because nobody's going to be wearing a headdress for the reason you think in a hundred years, okay? The only people going to be wearing it are people who are dressing up. So would you rather these ideas fade into obscurity or would you rather they join the melting pot of society? Which would you prefer? Which is a greater tragedy? and oftentimes changing its original meaning. Yeah, okay. For an example, the swastika, which we are all familiar with as a symbol used by the Nazis during the Holocaust. Originally, the swastika was used as a sacred symbol in Hinduism and Buddhism to represent prosperity, good luck, and liberation. However, it started being associated with rather opposite concepts in the 1920s when it was appropriated <sighs> and bastardized by the Nazi party. This is the perfect example of an outside group taking something of religious and cultural significance. So now are you saying that like um let's say a white guy has dreadlocks he can be compared to the nazis because just as the nazis appropriated the swastika white people have appropriated dreadlocks or native american headdresses it sounds pretty dumb when you think about it significance and changing its original meaning so that it's no longer accessible to the group that it was taken from modern well, examples of cultural appropriation include katy perry so are you telling me that when katy perry dresses like a geisha that no asian people can ever dress like that again because white people have stolen that concept from them <sighs> you see it doesn't work that way if you really think that once white people uh, take a certain look for themselves that they have stolen it from another culture, then you are in fact disempowering the original culture. You're claiming that white people have the power to actually steal ideas. Don't you think it's a little patronizing to pretend you're sticking up for all these minority cultures by claiming that white people have so much power that they can completely destroy the culture simply by mimicking it? And minorities don't need you to come shit your thoughts into the echo chamber to stick up for them. If you really think that Katy Perry dressing like this is racist, or if you really think that a white guy with dreadlocks is racist, maybe you're the one that's racist. Maybe you need to realize that races don't own ideas and that they're not the sole arbiters of how those ideas can be expressed. 
performing in a modified kimono and geisha makeup, Katy Perry performing in a bindi, and just Katy Perry in general. Maybe she appreciates but, other cultures. Maybe she likes to dress like that because she finds it a cool style of dress. Once again, it's kind of racist to imply that anyone who appreciates another culture and wants to emulate it in some way is a thief from that culture. It's, it's a little racist. Isn't America supposed to be a melting pot? The myth of the melting pot is an outdated model How's it a myth? used to describe... The How's it a myth? It's fucking in action. We can see the melting pot in action. It's been going on for hundreds of years. And the only reason there are cultures that refuse to assimilate into the melting pot of American culture is because people like you are telling minorities that they need to stay in their place. Oh, you guys can have all these ideas for yourselves. Uh, and anyone who tries to act like this, we'll just call them racists. Why? Why? Can't you see that when you emulate another culture, it's because you find something cool about it? It doesn't have to be demeaning or degrading. The fact that you look into it that way means that you view that original culture as having very little worth to begin with. Equal blending of cultures to create... Man, white supremacy has become very insidious. At this point, white supremacists don't even realize that they're racists. One single new and better culture. However, most sociologists have scrapped this idea and choose to look at the blending of cultures like a salad. Is they that even true? They their own distinct shapes and flavors, and some cultures are more prominent than others. Viewing America like a melting pot implies that all cultures are mixed and valued equally, which is not so much the That's case. That's not what it implies. It doesn't imply that as soon as you enter the American culture, you are immediately equally considered a part of the culture. That's not how it works. The point of a melting pot is that Let's say like three generations ago, your great-grandfather came to this country on a boat and was living with the ways of the Ukrainian people. Over time, he would begin and his generations would begin to assimilate into American culture. It's not a conscious decision that's made. It's simply a part of nature. People simply try to fit in because it gives them an advantage of survival and of becoming a higher part of the culture, of raising their caste. You're denying that people do assimilate into the culture. When they clearly do, you can clearly view it. It's empirically true that we're a melting pot. In the U.S. In the United States, you see a dominant culture that was originally established and enforced by white European colonizers onto the native people of the land. An example of this is Christian missionaries you forcing Native charisma. American children to attend Christian boarding schools, where they were literally forced to give up their cultural values and language in order to assimilate into the dominant white. That is not what's happening with cultural appropriation. Putting on a headdress is not the same thing as forcing Native Americans to act like white Christians. And you've also made the Nazi comparison already. You really can't view dressing up in a particular way as harmless. You have to view it as some insidious behavior, like forcing people to believe things that they don't. That's not what's happening. It's the opposite of what's happening. It's an expression of individuality, not an expression of forced collectivism. How can you take one thing and say that it means the opposite of what it clearly is intended to mean? society. You can also see tons of examples of this today, like the negative stereotyping of black culture or the enforcement of the English language on American citizens. So what is the difference between cultural exchange and cultural appropriation? Cultural exchange occurs when two groups on relatively equal footing, meaning one isn't oppressing the other, share cultural items, ideas, or traditions with each other in a respectful and- So basically, you will be the arbiter of when something stops being cultural appropriation and starts being cultural exchange. You don't understand that part of the reason that people can move up and become equal in culture is because of assimilation, because cultures start assimilating and having a symbiotic relationship with one another. That's why people move up. That's why people are respected and taken seriously. Way. A cultural group or group member is willingly sharing their culture with another group and defining willingly. the exchange okay. on their own terms. However, we So it's up to other people to decide what I can and cannot wear. Why would I give my authority away to total strangers who are so sensitive that the sight of cultural appropriation makes them piss themselves with rage? Why would I let these people decide how I can express myself? We also need to look at the relationship between the cultural group- Get in your box, everyone! That's what you're telling us, right? That we all need to act how our own culture is uh, laid out. That people like you can decide what culture we should be a part of. 
that's involved in the exchanging of culture. Richard A. Rogers states in his paper from- Your video, by the way, is awful. It's so boring. You have no charisma. You're clearly reading from a statement that's been prepared. You are not speaking off the cuff. We can't see your actual personality in any way whatsoever. Totally robotic. I mean, I'm only watching this video at this point because I have things to say about it, but you are not exactly a powder keg of personality here cultural exchange to transculturation, cultural appropriation is inescapably intertwined with cultural politics. It is involved in the assimilation and exploitation of marginalized and colonized cultures, and in the survival of subordinated cultures oh my God, and the resistance this is boring. to dominant cultures. Stop reading from other people's work to us. Tell us your own thoughts. At least express the fact that you can think for yourself. That would be great. When looking at cultural exchange, it's important to look at the power structures involved. Is the culture being taken a dominant or subordinated culture? Ugh. According to Rod You are not the arbiter of what culture is dominant and what is subordinated. But anyway, I can't stand this video anymore. I'm getting too worked up. I hope you learned your lesson, though. And I hope you realize that cultural appropriation is one of the most racist and insidious uh, ideas that we have floating about in the world of social justice right now. It's quite toxic and poisonous, and it's actually hurting minorities. So just take that into account. And that being said, I think I'm done with this episode. Let me know what you guys thought of it, okay? And I love you, and I will see you later this week. Adios!